Well, good morning, everybody. This is Bob Elson, and we're set as usual with our Sunday morning show. And this show we're doing at our Harlem and Irving office, which is a very, very busy neighborhood, and we have a wonderful location here. I'm delighted to have two old friends as guests today, Ed Kelly, who is the superintendent of the Park District, and Larry Kane, who is the general manager of the International Amphitheater. They're both civic-minded, they're both sports-minded. We have many, many things to talk about, and they'll be with us in just about one minute. When I talk about the Park District, I'm aware, perhaps more than most people are in Chicago, the many wonderful things that the Park District does. Uh, they have programs for everybody in every walk of life, and from the cradle to the end of it. Uh, they have wonderful programs for the disabled, they have programs for youth, they have programs for the elderly, and uh, you know what, I've always felt, uh, last year I worked one of your programs for Pat Condon at Soldier Field, remember? Right, the mental retarded program. Yes, and I was absolutely amazed at that program. Well, as you know, Bob, the program, uh, we initiated a program here in Chicago, and uh, we held our, our first uh, real uh, large program at Soldier Field. And, of course, it's become a nationwide uh, program in many of the cities throughout the country. And then the, the day winds up with a big dinner and a dance and a party for them over at the, I believe it was the Conrad Hilton, That's which correct. really topped off a really marvelous day. Well, I think an um, important part of the program is not only the, with the kids that we have involved, but the parents. You know, the parents really seem to appreciate what we're doing at the Park District, and I uh, you know it makes us all feel very good. Larry Kane is involved with the International Amphitheater, which is a important site on Chicago's south side. It's housed many of the great attractions that have come to the city of Chicago. And I like to think of the old story, Larry, about the presidents who walked around there. Yes, we had quite a few of them walk around there, uh, Bob, since we had uh, political co conventions in 1952, 1956, 1960, and 1968. So there's been quite a few presidents walked around there. Now, they did have an apartment, didn't they, in one of the old buildings? Yes, uh, in the Stockyard Inn, we had what we call the presidential suite. And, uh, of course, the Stockyard Inn was uh, was torn down last year, so a lot of those mementos uh, were uh, were passed around to various people within the company and, and others, too. Did any president or president-to-be spend the night there? Oh, yes. Uh, president Eisenhower spent uh, the better part of a week there. Uh, and, um, of course, it was after his first heart attack, so it was necessary to construct a very slow elevator to, uh, to get up to that suite. And, uh, and of course, uh, Harry Truman was around there. John F. Kennedy uh, uh, spent a lot of time in that suite. And so it's a, a very, it was a very historical uh, little suite. Yes. It's just too bad that you couldn't have kept that intact. Yes, it, uh, it was too bad, Bob, but uh, the, the economics of operating the stockyard in just weren't there because it was in pretty bad repair. Ed Kelly and Larry Kane are, as I said, civic-minded. What did you fellas think of the new football coach, Ed? Well, I think uh, I, I was talking to Larry earlier, and I think uh, he's going to be a terrific asset to the Bear organization. He's very low-key. He certainly has the experience. He's got the all-around experience that you'd want a head coach to have. He's been an offensive coach, and, of course, he's a top defensive coach. So I think he's going to be a great asset to the Bears. Larry? I certainly agree with Ed. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, you'll see some, some big things happening with, uh, with Armstrong at the helm. He looks to me like the type of guy that Pardee was. Pardee was a perfect gentleman, a really marvelous man to be around. He set a fine example for the football players in his own personal life. And I think Armstrong is the same type of man. I think you're correct. I, uh, he's very low-key, and I, I, I think he, 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 he really goes along with the Bear organization on that, that basis. You know, I think everyone from Coach Hallis right on down are very similar in their ways, and I think they'll get along great together. You know, for years... We have been talking about the possibility of a new stadium in Chicago. Now we're talking about the probability of, I think that's the right word, the probability of a new stadium. Uh, Larry, I feel that uh, this time something's coming out of this. Well, I certainly do, too. I think it's very encouraging that uh, Mayor Belandic uh, uh, appointed uh, go former Governor Ogilvie to this uh, fact-finding commission, so to speak, to travel around to take a look at uh, some of the other stadiums uh, around the country and uh, maybe finally we will have a stadium uh, a new stadium here in Chicago which is long overdue 
You know, Ed Kelly, many many people have wondered because St. Louis, Philadelphia, Buffalo, Detroit, they all have these great stadiums. And in recent years, whenever the stadium proposal came up, there always seemed to be roadblocks of one kind or another. Do any of these great cities, uh, other cities, have problems that are different than the city of Chicago financially? Well, I think uh, most major cities throughout the country are having financial problems, and I think the key to a new stadium will be to make sure that we don't overload uh, the taxpayers with a, a tremendous amount of money for a facility that will not be able to pay its way. And I think that's going to be the key on, on any new facility that comes into Chicago. Well, how have these other cities done it? The other cities are having uh, a, a very difficult time. Some of them just went overboard on the money spent, and uh, they're having a very diffi difficult time. Uh, in fact, most of them are losing money on these new facilities that they have put up. And uh, I, think, uh, I don't think that's going to be the case here in Chicago. Uh, I feel very confident. I'm on that committee, and I feel very confident that when we do come up with a solution, it's going to be a solution where we're not going to be overloading uh, taxpayers with any additional tax uh, revenue. And, uh, and we can do it here in Chicago. There's no question about it. We can, we can make uh, this stadium not only for football, for, but for other events here. Larry, where would you like to see a new stadium located? Well, of course, I'm uh, I'm very selfish. I'd like to see it right adjacent to the International Amphitheater. <laughs> and be a bad idea. At that. Well, uh, from an accessibility uh, standpoint, Bob, uh, it's very easy to reach uh, down there, and and of course we do have about 65 uh, acres of uh, vacant land down there. I don't know exactly what the plan is as far as amount of acreage uh, needed for the stadium. Maybe Ed would have a better idea than that, but. Uh, it's, of course, they've talked about the old Dearborn Street Station as a possible location for it. And um, I think the lakefront, from what I've heard, has been virtually ruled out. I don't know, maybe Ed can talk to that, too. But, uh, but uh, getting back to the, um, to the stockyards area, we're accessible from the Dan Ryan, from the Stevenson, and uh, there's good egress and ingress to the, to the area. What about that, Ed? It's not well, illogical at all. I'm uh, I, I'm on record as uh, uh, wanting a new facility right at right where it's at now in Soldier Field, and my reasons for that are uh, uh, well for a couple of reasons. We can now park nearly fifteen thousand cars in that area, which we did not have that number uh, years ago. Uh, when we start talking about building new facility, new stadiums, and that you know, it's not only uh, putting a building up. Uh, or a facility up, but then you have to worry about the parking facilities and the things that are involved there, which goes into a tremendous amount of money. And I'm on record that I, I really think that we should stay right where we're at, right at Soldier Field, and we're not talking a, a tremendous number of dollars uh, in comparison with what the other cities have done throughout the country. Well, now, have you had a chance? You probably haven't to see the new Detroit set up at Pontiac, Michigan. I've looked at, uh, I, uh, I haven't been there personally, but I've seen the plans of nearly every stadium around the country. I've spent over three and a half years on this myself. When Mayor Daly was alive, uh, we've, we spent, I've spent over three years on this myself personally. Well, now at Pontiac, do they have a temporary roof set up? Well, when you say temporary, uh, it's uh, the Pontiac situation is altogether different than our situation because of the cost. You're talking, a, you know, a different locality. You're talking different costs when you get into uh, uh, the, the the unions and things of that nature. And uh, it's a it's a nice facility, but it's really geared for football. You know, and I, we're talking about not just building a facility for football alone. We're talking about bringing other events in in the Soldier Field. Larry Kane, do you feel that in the uh, publicity so far about the new stadium, their talk about involving a racetrack, a uh, number of people that I talk to don't want to see a, a racetrack set up in this thing. They think there's enough gambling around town, there are enough tracks, enough races, and all that sort of thing. How do you view that angle? Well, of course, uh, Bob, the uh, racing uh, brings in a lot of revenue, and I think, uh, uh, I think that is one of the factors that uh, would be in favor of it. Uh, basically, a racetrack could uh, probably pay for half the uh, half the facility, <clears throat> but um, I don't know. I don't have a a strong feeling uh, one way or the other on that score. If they want to bring in a track that really is going to raise a lot of money, bring in a dog track. Absolutely, or highlight. Yes, I mean uh, Ed, uh, the dog track seems to me to be if if. You and your members of your committee are talking about something that's really going to bring in 
immediate revenue. And they've got dog racing other places in Florida and, and, and other places. Yeah, by uh, Michigan, too, now. Yes, yes. They pay, I, that was uh, one of my first suggestions I made three years ago. And when I made that suggestion, uh, I, I think quite a, many heads went up in the air, in fact, including Mayor Daly's. I made that suggestion at one of our meetings. And, and the purpose, of course, is what Larry just mentioned, as well as yourself, that the revenue there. And we're talking about another key thing, about activating the downtown area, the loop area. And that would be one way of doing it, because if you have events going there, such as a dog track, uh, you could have that facility going just about every day, and you'd be bringing people down in the downtown area, and the restaurants would be able to capitalize on All the businesses in the downtown area would be able to capitalize possibly on the overflow and people yes. coming through. I think that would be a great thing. Yes. Have either one of you ever visited the dog track at Hollywood, Florida? Oh, yes, indeed. Isn't that a setup? That's a beautiful setup. I've, l I've left a little money down there, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we had something like that with the little uh, kind of a television set on the dining room tables in the dining room so that they don't have to leave the table to see a race. Well, Bob, you hit one of the key questions, too. It isn't, everyone's thinking about a, a feel, and I think when you, you think about a new facility, you should be uh, taking into consideration, as I said, the downtown area. You know, uh, here, that's why I think we should keep it in the Soldier Field area. Uh, we've eliminated the problem with the band shell, with the new band shell going to Monroe Street, uh, where we had a terrific problem there with traffic congestion when we had events going on there. I think that's been eliminated completely. And uh, I think, uh, like I say, our main interest is bringing people down in the downtown area, not just only to see the bears, but for other events we could have in, in that particular area. And I think it would help to uh, reactivate downtown. While you're talking about that subject and while we're talking about the city of Chicago generally, what about, what about the, the building that stands across from the city hall? What are they going to do with that, the old Hotel Sherman? Well, uh, I believe Jerry Kaufman is the, is uh, one of the prime owners of that facility, and there was talk that that building would be uh, renovated into office space for, you know, dental technicians and doctors and things along that line. Now, whether that's still going to be uh, the plan, I don't know. I, you know, that has we have nothing to do with that as far as the city or the park district is concerned, but I certainly hope they do something with that facility because it's in a, a key location down there, and I think it would be just, just wonderful if they did some of the things that they're hoping to do. And, of course, I I guess money again will dictate you know yes. what they will do our guest today and our program this morning is coming from our Harlem and Irving office our Larry Kane the general manager of the International Amphitheater and Ed Kelly the superintendent of the Park District and we'll be back with our guests in just a moment getting back to our guests here at Northwest Federal this morning Larry Kane and Ed Kelly Larry, tell us a little bit about the history of the International Amphitheater and some of the great events that have been held there. Well, Bob, of course, the, the present uh, arena part of the amphitheater was constructed in 1934 after the uh, famous Stockyards Fire, which was May 19th, 1934. And um, the uh, two additions that were put on, one in uh, 1952 and one in 1956, uh, give us a total square footage of 585,000 square feet. So as a result, the International Amphitheater has housed every major industrial show practically that exists. Well, of course, at the present time, we're being phased out a bit because of uh, McCormick Place, but the arena part of the amphitheater is still very active for things like the sports show, for the circus, for rock concerts, uh, boxing, wrestling. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Ed is going to have his um, finals of the Park District uh, uh, for boxing over in the amphitheater, as well as the Golden Gloves will be held there. So we can uh, we can say, Bob, that we've housed just about anything that uh, is in existence. Ed just brought up an important, uh, an important point, parking. How do you do with parking at the International Amphitheater? Very well. We, we, have, uh, we have excellent parking facilities right adjacent to the building, and, uh, and that is one of the, one of the big pluses uh, for the amphitheater. What, what is the trend now in show business? What are people coming out, clamoring out, standing in line to hear and see? Well, um, of course, the, the rock business is still very, very strong. And then you have some of these specialized uh, things. I'll give you one example. Sean Cassidy. We uh, put uh, two copies of Sean Cassidy uh, on sale. Uh, the first one sold out in about a day and a half. The second show sold out in one hour and 20 minutes. And uh, that's an attraction that... Uh, is for basically little girls from 10 to 14 years old, and they just go uh, go crazy for it. But um, um, wrestling is still uh, very strong. 
The circus uh, set an all-time record at the amphitheater. They did uh, about uh, close to a million and a quarter uh, dollars worth of business, and uh, and of course uh, that's a that's a big chunk. I should say it is. Ed Kelly, when you talk about the uh, the lakefront for the new stadium, you must have, and you and the committee, and you um, let's get to you personally, your own feeling about it. What other alternate sites could you be talked into? Well, I don't. I could be talked into just about anything if it makes sense uh, as far as uh, the city of Chicago is concerned, and if it would not overload, as I said uh, earlier, the taxpayers. I just cannot see, you know, uh, floating a tremendous bond issue, uh, especially the way things are today with people, you know, having a very difficult time making a living. Uh, I think. I think the key would be, the, of course, the location, and I, I don't think there's too many locations in the Chicago area where where you'd have enough acreage really to do you know what you'd like to do and uh, I just think uh, that uh, I, I personally this is my own personal opinion I think it would be a mistake to leave the area where we're in now I mean Soldier Field to me you know that was named after the veterans and I think that's it's kind of a sacred thing as far as I'm concerned uh, as far as that f- uh, facility is concerned, I've I've known many sports casters that have been down there. that have announced the Bear Games on national TV. Uh, I, I just they love that area. They really do. They love that those colonnades and and the image of Soldier Field. I think is is just something that they, uh, we should keep right there. Yeah. Have you ever seen the setup at Bloomington, Minnesota? No, I have never been there. It's a terrific setup. Yes. I, well, there's there's other setups that are terrific throughout the country, but they're losing an awful lot yes, of money. Well, what I'm thinking about at Bloomington, Minnesota, Larry, have you seen it? Yes, I have, Bob. Mm-hmm. You, don't you agree That's with me? That's a fantastic facility, yeah. yeah. And it uh, it didn't cost a lot of money, and they can seat a lot of people, and they have one of the best big stadium parking setups I've ever seen. You know, one of the problems at Soldier Field, I don't know whether you know it or not, but on a rainy day when you go out in that thing, you have an awful time finding your car. Well, the, I... I... The identity poles that they have at Bloomington, Minnesota, you should take a look at. Mm-hmm. Well, we've done, uh, we, uh, this past season, we did uh, set up uh, an identification uh, system in the parking areas, and I don't know if, if you, you were aware of it or not. I know uh, when Possibly you do, you not. do. We, we did do that this year, and uh, the people are not having any problem at all. In fact, uh, it took 33 minutes to clear that area. That's We, we timed that at every game. We know exactly how long it takes to get out of particular lots, and uh, it was 33 minutes. That's uh, exactly how long it takes to get out. When you visualize a new stadium on that site, do you visualize some kind of walkover ramps from Michigan Avenue or something like that? That would be, I think, part of the overall plan, and of course the city would come in on that, because uh, if we ever do anything, and the, the intentions are, of course, uh, Roosevelt Road eventually uh, coming and meeting uh, the, the outer drive there, uh, that would be a great help in, in setting up some type of a ramp system where they could come from the IC parking lots over into, you know, across the drive. So we do. All of that will be taken into consideration. What was the original cost of Soldier Field? Oh, goodness, I, I really couldn't tell you. Uh, under 50? Oh, go- yes, it was. It was under 50. And that, during those years, there's no question about it. I know how close you were to the late Mayor Daly. What were a few of his feelings and thoughts on, on a stadium for Chicago? You see, He certainly talked about it during his lifetime and during his tenure here as one of the greatest mayors we've ever had. Well, Bob, as you know, I was the last person really with him prior to his death. Yeah, I was with him an hour before he passed away. And uh, I, I spent uh, a weekend with him just about a week before he did pass away. And, and that was part of our conversation, the feel. And I, uh, he was going to make an announcement in January on what his intentions were. And, of course, January never came for him. But um, uh, I think he was going to go ahead and uh, with an announcement on a new facility, whether it was going to be at Soldier Field or elsewhere, I really couldn't tell it, uh, but uh, there's no question in my mind he was going to move at that particular time. He was all set. For Absolutely, no question about it. What about Mayor Blandick? Mayor Blandick, uh, I think, uh, is in the same position. Mayor Blandick, I uh, is going to move, and uh, and uh, like any person, after all, he's just come into this office, and he certainly might have different ideas from myself or you or Mayor uh, Daly, but I think Mayor Blandick is going to, you know, is really going to show leadership on this here project. Larry Kane, what would a new Chicago stadium and a facility of this type do to you? Uh, it wouldn't affect um, the amphitheater to, to any degree whatsoever because um, uh, basically we're an indoor facility, and as I, as I feature a new stadium, it would not be a domed-type stadium. It would be an, an outdoor facility 
uh, and and uh, so as a result, uh, we would operate as usual. Uh, I think it would um, probably help uh, my overall business because, uh, and I think it would help the entire city of Chicago because a lot of people would be attracted to Chicago to a new facility, as it has happened in other cities. Uh, take, for example, when Kansas City uh, put together their two stadiums down there. Why did they do that? Side. Well, um, well, it was uh, it was rather interesting. I think uh, one of the reasons was Lamar Hunt wanted a football stadium as such, and uh, and of course the uh, they needed a baseball facility too. So they decided to utilize the parking area. Uh, and double-head it and have uh, two separate facilities. And that is another uh, outstanding facility as far as I'm concerned, uh, the Kansas City setup. It's a beautiful setup and it's a real moneymaker down there. That one is, uh, is well, up, up until the past couple of years, it, it was doing very well. However, uh, the Chiefs have not drawn uh, particularly well in the last two years. Uh -huh. Ed, uh, do you visualize some kind of a roof on the stadium? Uh, I Temporary or otherwise? No, I don't. You don't? No. Because when you go to that extreme, you're talking additional monies. Uh -huh. And I think this is going to be one of the high priorities. I mean, to probably to get the best facility at the lowest amount of money we can spend. Now, in, in, in the discussions leading to the stadium, have you and the members of the committee talked with Bill Wrigley, Arthur Wirtz, Bill Veck? Uh, how, how do you feel about the fact that these fellows all seem to have their own property and so on and so forth, and they seem to want to stay where they are? Well, I think it, it it boils down to money. I mean, they have their own operation. They, have, they own their own facility. Why would they want to go elsewhere? I mean, they have a facility that they want to keep active, and they've got the teams. They own the teams, and I think, you know, that's their feeling. I think they've gone on record indicating that, too. Uh, that's why I say to go even think about a dome stadium, I think, would be ridiculous because I can't see Arthur Wirtz moving out of the stadium with the uh, with the hockey team and also with the Bulls, and the same thing with uh, with Wrigley and Vec. Now, Vec is uh, up until two, three years ago indicated there might be a possibility he might be interested if he could sell his property out there. But now, uh, up, um, I think just three or four weeks ago, he indicated he had no intentions that he would like to stay just where he's at on their own facility. So I think, you know, it's just it's like anything else. If you don't have the tenants to pay for the building, you're just, you know, you're just not going to go that route. That's right. Larry, is, uh, is Arthur Wirtz a competitor of yours? Yes, in, uh, in uh, quite a few respects, uh, particularly in the concert business. Uh, of course, his facility is, is a larger one than, uh, than ours at the amphitheater. But... Um, uh, of course, we don't have a hockey team to compete with them anymore because the Chicago Cougars went down the drain. But um, uh, generally speaking, he is a, a competitor to a degree. Is he more that setup more expensive than yours? Oh yes, yes, because it's a it is a larger facility. But uh, getting back to uh, to Soldiers Field, I think um, Ed did an outstanding job last summer in uh, uh, getting the revenues uh, from the outdoor concerts. I think that was outstanding. Well, it really was, you know, and those Bob, revenues... You are... know, Bob, I'm, uh, it sounds like we're throwing flowers at each other, but, you know, Larry uh, is a little modest there. He, he, uh, he's done a heck of a job down at that amphitheater because there's so much activity going on down there, and uh, he did not mention this last tennis event he had down there. It broke all records from what I have been told, and I was down there, and they had a tremendous crowd, so tennis has uh, really come back to Chicago, and it's come back to Chicago. At Another the, nice at thing the about it, Larry's got that building well organized out No there. question about it. Very impressed. Yeah, it is. Our guest today at Harlem and Irving, our office at Harlem and Irving for Northwest Federal, are Ed Kelly, the superintendent of the Park District, and Larry Kane, the general manager of the International Amphitheater, and we'll be back with our guests in just a moment. Our guests this morning at our Harlem and Irving office are Larry Kane, the general manager of the International Amphitheater, and Ed Kelly, the superintendent of the Park District. You know, Chicago... You fellows have traveled like I have. You've been around. Uh, well, I visited all of America's great cities for 40 years, going in with the baseball teams and football teams and hockey teams. They can say what they want about this city. You know, people say, well, Chicago doesn't have a winner. But Chicago's got them beat to start with. This has got to be the greatest city in America. <laughs> and that's a plus. Easy. Uh, there's no question about it. I, uh, uh, Chicago, I've been to numerous cities, too, and, and I think uh, most of the pe people that don't live in Chicago are the first to compliment us. They love, you know, they come here and they just love everything that we have here. Larry, what about you and your travels around? You've seen the other cities? Oh, indeed, and I'll tell you what, uh, as far as overall sports and, uh, 
And just uh, general participation, I don't think there's another city uh, in this country like Chicago. And I'm not a native-born Chicago, and I came from uh, from Wisconsin. And I can certainly tell you this, that there are tons and tons of people every year come from not only surrounding states, but all over the world just to come and see this great city of Chicago, the city that works. Yes, it certainly does. And a great new stadium here would be a great asset. It's a new shot in the arm for the city of Chicago. You know, Ed, when you talk about the Cubs and the White Sox and the Blackhawks, now the stadium is a fine building, and it's well kept up, and Arthur Wirtz does a great job, and it's his own building out there, and I can understand him wanting to keep the, ho the hockey team and the Bulls there. But the Cubs, you know, I broadcast the Cub games from 1930 to 1943, and at that time, they could park uh, 86 cars around there. Now they can park 88. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, there you again, know, a big uh, you know, setup people, in a new people, stadium would help them. People complaining about the parking facilities in here. I told you earlier, we can park 15,000 cars in and around Soldier Field. Whereas, you know, many people would take the elevated over. Of course, the CTA like that, I guess, when the Cubs are in town. But uh, we have CTA buses uh, coming in and shuttle serv free shuttle service we give. We're doing everything we can to encourage people not only to use our parking, but also the CTA when they come down to yes. the game. Now, how many cars can the Sox park? Sox, I believe, I'm going to take a guess, but I think they're, they're, we're talking around in the area there about 7,000. I don't, I'm, don't hold me to it, but I think that's basically. I know, Larry, I remember when I was out the, with Traeger and them at the amphitheater when the Packers were there. I think this uh, parking out at your place was around 5,000 just in the lot alone, which, and now, of course, that's increased, right, Larry? Yeah, that, we, we could park around 5,000 cars in the area. Mm hmm. So that, it, that's a lot of cars. You have a big parking space behind the building. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes. We have uh, well, we have uh, 23 acres that are that's all paved. So that uh, that parks a lot of cars. Oh yes, yes, indeed. Can you recollect quickly what's been the single biggest event you've ever witnessed at the International Amphitheater? Boy, that's a that's a toughie. The single b biggest event would probably be the 68 uh, political convention. That because uh, uh, I, I tell you, I lived there for four days. I never left. <laughs> And the guy on your right here was concerned about that. <laughs> You're right. You're so right, boy. He had a lot of activity out there. <laughs> I'll say this, Bob. It was the safest place in town. <laughs> well, I, uh, Bob, I agree. Uh, there's no question. That that was a highlight, I think, of the amphitheater for many, many years. And uh, I, uh, same thing here uh, in Chicago. I said, like, uh, like I told her, uh, Larry earlier, uh, I think Chicago is, is going to come on strong on a lot of sporting yeah. events really and at the amphitheater too i think it's a great place to watch basketball tennis boxing it's a super yeah. place don't forget wrestling oh wrestling Our friend too. bob Lewis. oh absolutely yeah. there's no question thanks both of you for being with us today and for the informative things you've told nice being with you bob thank you thank, thank you, you very much bob our guest today larry kane the general manager of the international amphitheater and ed kelly who does a great job as the superintendent of the park district and believe me they do a lot of good here for the citizens of chicago well have a nice sunday and now this is Bob Elson reminding you that Ray Meyer, the coach of DePaul,